course, our top story, India, China, Brazil, South Africa, Russia, from one of the world's most important economic blocs and the BRICS heads of state and government summit in South Africa's Johannesburg seeks to widen its influence. We've been discussing this as well. Absolutely, Haim, and they also push for a shift in global geopolitics. Meanwhile, Russia is being represented by Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov with President Putin participating online for the upcoming summit. Right, and there is strong buzz of a possible meeting between Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping as well. Of course, as you know, Asia in recent years, the border between China and India has become the site of growing tensions. Chinese aggression has sparked clashes along the mostly rugged mountainous border known as the line of actual control. Absolutely, hey, ma'am, and especially amid Xi Jinping's irrational territorial ambitions, both the sides have increasingly militarized their border policies and also shown no indication of backing down. The situation on the border that remains tense due to China's violation of norms, Beijing and New Delhi, they are hardening their position on either side of the line of actual control. India is firm. Peace and tranquility in border areas is essential. And New Delhi also says that it is fully prepared and committed to protecting sovereignty and dignity of its country. Now, Indian National Security Advisor Ajit Doval is accompanying the Prime Minister on South Africa visit. Putin decided against, as we mentioned earlier as well, Putin decided against attending in person as he is the target of an international criminal court arrest warrant that South Africa is in theory bound to enforce. We were talking about this even yesterday, Haim. Now, meanwhile, BRICS was founded as an informal club in 2009 to provide a platform for its members to challenge a world order dominated by U.S. and its Western allies. Its creation was initiated by Russia back then. Now, as per UN data, the BRICS grouping, it represents more than one quarter of the global GDP and 42% of the world's population. Significantly, the BRICS have seen their economic influence increase over the past decades as drivers of global growth, trade and investment. The heads of state and the government of the member nations convene annually, with each nation taking up a one-year rotating chairmanship of the group. Well, the bloc operates by consensus. All the BRICS countries are a part of the G20 of major economies. Some 50 other leaders who are not BRICS members, including Iranian President Abraham Raisi and also the Indonesian President Joko Widodo, are attending the South Africa talks. And at least 40 countries have in fact shown interest in becoming members, with 23 having submitted their applications as well. Some of the countries aspiring to be BRICS members include Argentina, Bangladesh, Bahrain, Cuba, Ethiopia, Indonesia, Iran, Nigeria and Saudi Arabia. Block aspirants view BRICS as an alternative to global bodies, viewed as dominated by the traditional Western powers, and they hope the membership will unlock the benefits including development, finance, increased trade and investment. Well, this satisfaction with the global order among developing nations was exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. That is when the life-saving vaccines were hoarded by the rich countries. And Beijing is now pushing the BRICS to become a full-scale rival to the G7. And Xi Jinping wants BRICS to be China-dominated. Now, that being said, analysts say countries such as Algeria, Argentina, Egypt and Iran see BRICS membership as a means above all to gain easier access to Chinese investment, in fact, and financial support. <coughs> Now, for more on this, we earlier spoke to our correspondent, Carl Nongmu, who told us what the key meetings and events scheduled for the day are. So, the actual summit itself in Santon Convention Center in Johannesburg will start from 2 p.m. onwards. We'll have the arrival of the leaders and there is the BRICS Leaders Business Forum meeting. Thereafter, they, uh, each leaders will be giving their opening uh, remarks. Round about 6 p.m. or so, they will be breaking up for the retreat until 8 p.m. But apart from that, there are other events that's taking place in and around Johannesburg. One important ev event that will be taking place this morning is the state 
state visit by Chinese President Xi Jinping uh, at the Union Buildings in Pretoria. Uh, we are told from the program that uh, the welcoming address will be around 10.30 a.m. in the morning. But apart from that, we are also being told by reliable sources that Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be landing in the morning and he has his own small meetings that has been set up with some of the Indian diaspora, which I'm yet to get a confirmed uh, invitation on that. Uh, but uh, we've been told he will be meeting 300 to 400 Indian uh, business uh, delegates uh, uh, apart from the summit. Those are the small meetings that's been set for today. Came also with uh, Xi Jinping and Narendra Modi under right. the same roof. Calderon further tells us what the expectations are for, from, for a potential Prime Minister Modi and Xi Jinping meet. Yes, uh, you know, I would love to be a fly in the room. If at all the two leaders, that's the Chinese President Xi Jinping and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, meets for a bilateral meeting, and nothing has been confirmed as of yet, at least going by what the Indian officials are saying. But if we go by what the Chinese ambassador said in a press briefing a few days back, he said that they would love to sit with the Indian Prime Minister for a bilateral meeting. They have a lot of issues that still need to get resolved. Uh, uh, you know, going by the border issue, the two uh, the two leaders haven't yet met since that uh, June 2020 when the border issue erupted. So they haven't really met uh, formally. So um, uh, Chinese uh, side says they would love to meet, they would love to have this meeting, but we haven't gotten a firm confirmation from the Indian side. But uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping arrived yesterday. Uh, he is uh, going to have a welcoming um, uh, state visit in Pretoria this morning. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be landing uh, this morning. He will have his own meetings on the sidelines of the main summit. The two presidents will, uh, you know, will be in one room more than once. You know, they will be together in the BRICS, the BRICS Leaders Forum. They'll be together in the retreat. There's a lot of photo session that's going to happen. So I don't think they're going to ignore each other. I'm sure um, if at all this meeting does take place, last minute it, there will be a confirmation and we'll keep you abreast with everything that's happening. And now joining us live from New Delhi, we have with us Dr. Srikant Kondapalli on the broadcast. He's a professor of Chinese studies at the Jawaharlal Nehru University in New Delhi. Professor, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you. Now, sir, I want to begin by asking you, what would you say are some of the key focus areas for India at the BRICS summit? Well, I think the uh, current uh, BRICS meeting is uh, considering the expansion of the membership. Um, uh, last July, there was a proposal from Iran, Saudi Arabia, and also Argentina and other countries like Indonesia, Turkey, uh, uh, so on and so forth. They have uh, uh, been reflecting on uh, joining the BRICS meeting. Uh, and so this is number one item that is there. Second, of course, is the Ukraine conflict uh, has resulted in a lot of uh, turbulence in terms of the energy prices uh, and uh, food and fertilizer. Energy, uh, if Saudi Arabia, the largest producer of uh, oil and gas, uh, if it joins the membership, then it would further strengthen the energy uh, producing countries block within the BRICS. Uh, it also has the largest number of uh, consumers like uh, China and India uh, in terms of the consumption, the second and fourth largest consumers in the world. So producers and consumers of energy uh, in the BRICS. So that is a second item. Uh, third, of course, is uh, the relative decline in the BRICS economic growth rates uh, and the possibility for expansion of the, uh, the restructuring of the Security Council, as well as the uh, Bretton Woods institutions like the IMF and World Bank, uh, voting rights, that are the third item on the agenda. Uh, and of course, there is the uh, rating agency's uh, role that uh, BRICS is considering. Uh, so these are some main items. Right, uh, Dr. Yeah. Srikant, you speak of expansion and restructuring of uh, the BRICS, but talk to us about uh, what are the chances of a bilateral meeting between uh, Modi and Xi Jinping. Uh, the last time both the leaders met uh, was, at, was at the G20 dinner last year in November. Do you see any chance of both the leaders meeting this time? Uh, well, the National Security Advisor, uh, Mr. Rajit Doval, had uh, met with uh, Wang Yi, the, for the, the uh, chairman of the China Foreign Affairs uh, Committee, and also 
foreign foreign minister uh, and there was the speculation about uh, a structured meeting the bilateral meeting between prime minister modi and president xi jinping in uh, uh, the brics meeting uh, currently uh, so there is this is still speculation because we have not had any uh, uh, official confirmation about it uh, secondly there is uh, the uh, as you know after galwan uh, uh, foreign minister dr jay shankar mentioned that unless until peace and tranquility prevails on the border there will not be any bilateral relations uh, we have not had any uh, opening uh, in terms of these uh, relations because of the chinese mobilization on the borders it is estimated that they mobilized about 70000 troops uh, against india uh, in the ladakh aksai chin sector uh, and that means that uh, the if the leaders have to meet first they have to uh, involve in uh, disengagement and deescalation in the border area so that is the sticking point for their meeting uh, it is not clear whether they will be meeting but uh, after um, uh, nss meeting with wangi there has been a speculation about hmm. their uh, and also president xi jinping is expected to visit the g20 meeting in uh, delhi uh, and uh, that uh, for that there needs to be uh, some back channel diplomacy and uh, a possible meeting between the two leaders now in brics would help in that process of uh, understanding and uh, further lead to uh, uh, you know some kind of concrete Uh, measures uh, during the G20 meeting uh, next month. Uh, right, sir. Absolutely. Now there are a lot of internal divisions within BRICS as well. Do you think the BRICS ambitions of becoming a global political and economic player that have been thwarted by internal divisions and a lack of a coherent vision? Indeed, uh, there is. Uh, this is an intercontinental grouping uh, and uh, poised to expand further with several uh, in the queue. Uh, but there are uh, the BRICS was formed as you mentioned earlier uh, that uh, the these are uh, rising economies. Uh, however, Brazilian growth rates have fallen. Uh, likewise, South African, likewise Russian, even Chinese growth rates have fallen to three point three percent last year, and they expect to grow at five point five. So the only rising country in the BRICS is India with eight point seven percent growth rate uh, expected in twenty twenty three. so this is number one uh, major challenge for the brics after the uh, the grouping came came about in 2009 uh, second challenge is as you mentioned there is the internal uh, you know rivalries etc between all of them uh, and uh, these are related partly to their relations with the united states and also the other uh, equations with european union and of course the ongoing ukrainian conflict which has torn apart many of the countries in the brics uh n- number 2 number 3 is that there is no uh, fta between all these brics countries free trade area agreement that indicates that there are concerns on the economic policies that each one of them follow and uh, uh intra brics trade is also very low compared to say brics countries trade with the united states or europe or other countries uh so there is the uh, third factor that economic integration is very less among the brics countries uh and of course they uh, are seen as uh, positioning the united states uh, unilateralism uh in the iraq afghan campaigns uh, however we now see that there is a uh, ukraine conflict uh, taking the uh, front line in the uh, whole of the uh, global strategic equations and so they are kind of divided on this issue as well right absolutely thank you so much dr shrikant uh, for joining us on beyond and sharing your insights with us on this we will we'll of course be tracking uh, the upcoming summit very closely here on beyond thanks very much for joining us thank you